The real inventor of the guillotine is a man lost to history named Tobias Schmidt, as is typical of those who actually make real changes. So we'll go with the next best thing, the politician and doctor that championed its use, Guillotine himself, who, as we will see, is actually a pretty cool guy. Joseph Ignaz Guillotine was born on the 28th of May, 1738, in Saintes, France. He was born prematurely because his mother was in distress after hearing the screams of a man being tortured to death on the breaking wheel. He was the second son of Joseph Alexandre Guillotine and Catherine Agatha Martin. He worked with the Jesuits in Bordeaux and earned a Master of Arts degree at the College of Aquitaine of the University of Bordeaux in December 1761. He was a very successful student. His essay to earn his degree impressed the Jesuits so much that he was invited to be a professor of literature at the Iris College in Bordeaux. However, he wanted to become a doctor more than anything as far as careers go and instead went to Paris and studied medicine by becoming a pupil of Antoine Petit. He gained a diploma from the faculty at Reims in 1768 and his doctorate at the School of Medicine in Paris in 1770, which also gave him the title of Doctor Regent. This would allow him to teach medicine in Paris. Guillotine would go on to become a renowned physician in Paris. He would also grow more and more concerned with torture and death, advocating that criminals should be able to be medical test subjects instead of facing a heinous death. Guillotine believed that even though this was still barbaric, it was better than what criminals were facing already, and wrote an official letter in 1775. In 1784, Guillotine would join a group appointed by King Louis XVI that would disprove animal magnetism as a form of pseudoscience and reveal Franz Mesmer to be a fraud. Other members of the group included Jean Sylvain Bailey, Antoine Boret de Usio, Antoine Lavissier, and Benjamin Franklin. This helped Guillotine grow in power, and would subsequently allow him to express his concerns about the state of execution and capital punishment. In December 1788, Guillotine would have enough. He drafted Petition of the Citizens Living in Paris concerning the proper constitution of the States General. The French Parliament attempted to suppress his pamphlet and summoned him to give an account of his opinions. But the crowd during his testimony was very much in support of him, and he was released, which served to increase his popularity. He would become one of ten Paris deputies in the Estates General of 1789. He would later select a location for the National Assembly to take the Tennis Court Oath, an oath taken directly against the Crown. Guillotine would direct attention to health issues and would be the first chair of the Health Committee, later submitting a bill for medical reform in 1791. Next he would try his hand at criminal law reform. At first, Guillotine would attempt to abolish capital punishment, but he would be unsuccessful. 
Guillotine realized that even though he would not be able to outright be rid of execution, he would be able to mitigate it. You see, at the time, in France and other parts of Europe, beheading was not typical. It was reserved for nobility, and was done with an axe or sword, which would not always allow for a clean beheading. Slipping or other horrors were possible, leading to a prolonged painful death. Commoners were normally hung, which isn't the best way to go, if you didn't know, especially since the necks wouldn't normally break due to methods of hanging in this time period. There were also other great ways of causing death guillotine was eager to stop, including the breaking wheel, boiling to death, burning at the stake, and dismemberment. On October 10th, 1789, he proposed that all people convicted to death be put to death via the same simple mechanism, regardless of social standing, that no legal discrimination or reproach by anyone should take place, and that the convicted shall not have their property taken away, including their body from their family, if the family should request it. This would be proposed in six articles. Over several years, these controversial articles would be accepted, and on the 25th of April, 1792, the first executions would take place one year after Guillotine retired from the assembly to return to medicine. Guillotine hoped that this mundane method of execution would cause less excited crowds during a public execution to occur, maybe even eventually leading to the execution of execution itself. He would not foresee the reign of terror during the French Revolution, or foresee a joke naming the device after him, causing people to doubt that he hated the death penalty. When negative press about the guillotine appeared, he would regret deeply that his name was forever tied to the device. Despite all of this unfortunate news, he would work to save nobility's lives from the bloodlust of the revolution, sometimes by potentially hiding them, leading to his imprisonment for a few years until the general amnesty of Ninth Thermidor. He also became a founder of vaccination, Guillotine's family would try to remove his name from the device, but be officially denied. He would die of natural causes from Carbuncle at a home in Paris, 1814. Though some people believe that he was killed by the guillotine, this is untrue. A criminal by the name of J.M.V. Guillotine, funny enough, also a doctor, but in Lyon, died via guillotine and their similar names and circumstances have fueled misinformation ever since. Guillotine was a doctor, and though he could not do no harm, was able to decrease the harm. Though this may be controversial, he did it by getting his hands dirty and staining his own name for the sake of the common good of all people. Enacting a social reform that would allow for further progress. I'll see you next time.